I actually use a few brands of pastel pencils, but my two favorites are the Faber-Castell Pit Pastels. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to use the Stabilo Carbothello. So the reason that I like those two brands of pastel pencils is because they aren't too hard or too soft. In my opinion, they are both great pencils, so whichever brand you have will be perfectly fine. You could also use the Derwent pastel pencils if you have those as well, but I don't find myself reaching for those as much as the other brands. I chose to use the Carbothello today for this piece because I really like their range of green colors. If you wanted to watch this tutorial in real time, so without any sped up footage or anything like that, where I talk you through the entire process step by step, I have this tutorial over on my Patreon channel. There's more information in the description below if you're interested in those kinds of tutorials. So when I'm working on darker areas like the background in here, especially if I'm working on something that's black, I like to use a dark blue or a dark green or another darker color mixed in with my black. And the reason that I like to mix in other colors with black is because it can look quite flat if you just use black by itself. So by mixing in other colors, it sort of creates a more vibrant and sometimes even darker color. So when you're working with pastel pencils, I prefer to use the Claire Fontaine pastel mat. That's my favorite kind of paper to work with with pastels. In the first few layers of working with pastel pencils, I'm not worrying too much about my pencil strokes. If you're used to working with colored pencil, you would probably be used to making sure that your pencil strokes are a little bit more controlled, but pastel pencils tend to blend out quite easily, nice and softly. So you don't have to worry too much about the direction of your pencil strokes or anything like that. But I do recommend still working in light layers, especially the first few layers. So just make sure that you're not pressing too hard throughout the entire process because you don't want to fill up that tooth of the paper. And if you're not sure what I mean by the tooth, basically every paper that you work on has these little hills and valleys. And when you come across with your pastel pencil, it's gripping onto the top of the hills and then depositing that pigment into the valleys. So once you have filled up the valleys with your pastel, it becomes level with the top of the hills and it creates this kind of slick, smooth surface where it's gonna be really hard to add more pastel on top of. So by working in light layers, you're not gonna fill up that tooth of the paper too quickly. It's gonna allow you to add more layers on top so that you can adjust the colors and have the piece look a little bit more realistic, especially if you're working on something that has fur or multiple layers of detail. So when you're working with pastel pencils, you want to work in many layers. So you don't wanna treat this as like a coloring in page where you're putting the right color in the right spot. That's not really how it works if you wanna make something that looks realistic and has a little bit more depth to it. So I recommend just building up your artwork in layers. So the way that I do this is by starting out by looking at my reference photo and picking a color that is really obvious to me. And then I add that color in the spot that I saw it in. And then while I've got that pencil in my hand, I'm just gonna look around the piece to see if there's anywhere else that I can add that color based off my reference photo. And then once I feel like I've added that color everywhere, I'm going to choose the next most obvious color to me, add that where I saw it, and then find anywhere else on the piece that I can use that color while I've got it in my hand. And the reason that I do this is because sometimes it can be a little bit hard to know where to start. And you don't have to start in any specific area this way, you're kind of just working on layers as a whole. So you're just picking something that is really obvious to you, whether it's the color, or how dark or light that area is and just start in that area and then apply that color anywhere else that you can use it while you've got it in your hand. And this also makes the piece look a little bit more cohesive as well. So there are some people that tend to work in small sections at a time. For instance, they'll work on the eye and then they'll complete that fully and then they'll move on to the leg and they'll complete that fully. The reason that I don't do that is because I forget which colors I've used in which section, how much I used of that color, um, what kind of texture I did there. Whereas when I work in layers, I don't have to worry about any of that. When I'm picking up a color, I'm placing it in multiple areas over the artwork. And then when I move on to my next layer, it doesn't really matter what I did in the layers before that because it's gonna look cohesive throughout each layer, if that makes sense. So when it comes to blending your pastel pencils, there's a few different ways you can do that. I tend to use a cotton tip in the first few layers 
And the reason that I'm using the cotton tip is because it really pushes that pastel into the tooth of the paper and helps blend the colors together a little bit more. Like I was talking about before with the tooth of the paper, if you blend your colors and push them into the tooth a little bit, that's gonna help remove any of that fine dust that might be sitting on top of the surface there. And it does help push it into the tooth of the paper a little bit more so that you can add more layers on top. And again, you don't have to press super hard for this. Once you give it a go, you'll know what I mean about the type of pressure that you need with your cotton tip. And when I get further along in my piece, I like to blend with my finger. And if you want to, you can wrap a tissue around your finger if that's better for you. But I tend to use my finger towards the end of the piece because it's not as harsh of a blending method as using the cotton tip because once I get towards the end, I've got a little bit more detail there and I don't wanna blend out all of the detail that I've added. So when I use my finger to blend, it kind of softens the pastel strokes without blending it out too much. It kind of gets rid of a little bit of that graininess or that crayon-like texture without blending it completely because you do wanna have some of that texture there that you've added with your pastel pencil because that's why we've added those details there. We don't wanna get rid of them every time we blend. So I find that if you're in the beginning stages and you're trying to cover up the color of the paper and try and create a smooth base to work with, or if you're doing smooth backgrounds like this one, I tend to use a cotton tip, but as I develop the piece and add more layers where I don't want to blend out all of the details and then I just use my finger just to gently soften any of that graininess. So with this set of pencils, I don't have a purple color that is light fast. So to create the purple that I used in some of the branches there, I'm just using a mixture of the blues and reds to create that color. You don't need to have a super large set of pastel pencils. This set was quite small and I also took out a lot of the colors that weren't light fast either. So I only have a small set of Carbothello pastel pencils to work with, but that's totally fine because you can just mix and layer your colors to get the desired color that you're after. And I talk about this all the time, but your colors are really not that important. Just try and get a color that is close to what you're seeing in the reference photo, but it's more about the value. So how dark that color is or how light that color is, is more important than the actual color itself. And if you're not sure what light fast means, it's basically a lot of artist grade pencils and paints and everything have light fast ratings. And these are basically just to tell you how long that pigment is going to last under museum conditions. So it's basically telling you how long it's gonna take before your artwork starts to fade or starts to yellow or discolor or anything like that. Light fast pigments tend to cost a little bit more than non light fast pigments and that's why there are artist grade suppliers that cost a lot more it's not because you can't create similar results with some of the student grade ones it's because of the quality of the pencils or the supplies that you're using a lot of those pencils are going to be light fast and that's something that's important to me because i sell my artwork so i don't want people to come back to me in a few years time saying that my work has discolored or faded or anything like that if you're used to working in colored pencil, you are probably used to having a sharp point on your pencil throughout most of the process. And when you're working with pastel pencils, it can be quite hard to get a fine point on a pastel pencil because of how soft they are. And when you do get a fine point, they tend to crumble quite easily. I try not to expect my pastel pencils to get a super fine point. Like throughout the entire process, you can see in this tutorial that I don't have a fine point on my pastel pencil. I'm kind of using the edges of the pencil and the way that I sharpen it is by removing the wooden casing with a craft knife or a Stanley knife. I find that you don't actually need to have super fine details with a pastel pencil. So one of the things that I talk about quite a lot is how much detail you need to add to a piece. And using pastel pencils is a good example of this is because I personally don't add much detail when I'm working with pastel pencils. I just add enough texture so that when I stand back from a normal viewing distance, I look at my artwork and it looks realistic. So when you get closer to the artwork, you're gonna see a lot of pencil strokes and a lot of colors, and it doesn't really look as detailed as it looks when you stand back. That's something that you can see if you go to a museum and you look at those really beautiful paintings that you know look realistic from a distance, but when you get close, all you can see is brush strokes and colors. It doesn't actually look as detailed as you think it looks when you're standing further back. And you can apply that kind of method with your pastel pencils as well. 
So the way that I determine whether there's enough detail there or not is by standing back, looking at my artwork, and if I can tell what that texture is supposed to be in that kind of area and it's looking realistic, and then you don't need to add more detail. If you are adding tiny little details and then you step back and you can't see those details that you're adding, they don't necessarily need to be there. And it's totally up to you how much detail you want to put into a piece, but I find that if you're if you just concentrate on your values and your proportions, so making sure that your shadows are dark enough and your highlights are light enough, and making sure that your initial outline is correct and your proportions are correct, that's way more important than having tiny little details or choosing the perfect colors. So you could spend a lot more time on your artwork than what I do if you want to have all those tiny little details, but for me, I'd rather spend less time on my artwork and have those pencil strokes or brush strokes or those kind of colors and textures visible when you look a little bit closer. I actually prefer that look. I think it shows a little bit more of your own artistic style and, you know, it looks a bit more like artwork than it does a photo. But again, when you stand back, it still looks realistic. But if you did want to create more details than what I have here, I have two tips for you. So the first one is to work larger. So that will help you with your sharpening of your pastel pencils. You're not going to need as fine a point to be able to get the amount of detail that you need. So if you worked a lot larger than this, it will look like the details are smaller, even though you don't need to sharpen your pastel pencil as sharp as like a color pencil on this size, for example. Just keep in mind that throughout your layering process, you are going to blend out quite a bit of the pencil strokes so I wouldn't sharpen your pencil to a fine point until you get to the last layer when you're adding those final details because it's going to be a waste of the pastel pencil because it does kind of blend out as you develop your layers and when you do need a really fine point on your pastel pencil I would still suggest using a craft knife or a Stanley knife to sharpen your pastel pencils and then just get a little bit of sandpaper whether that's from the hardware store or an art shop and just sand the point until you get a fine enough point for you to be able to use in the area that you need it in. So there are ways to get a sharper point if you need to, and there are ways to get that amount of detail if you want to add a lot of detail to your piece, just by working a lot larger. If you're looking for a beginner's tutorial that's a little bit more in depth about pastel pencils, and then I have this tutorial in the top corner there. So you click on that and I'll see you over there.